Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fro Show. My name is Frank Mankin and I'm joined, as always, by my beautiful co-host, Joe Murray. Hello, Frank. I was kind of running that along so that you could take a second Thank you. to drink. Thank you. That was a really bad time to that take a, a drink. That was a horrible time to take a drink. <laughs> um, you know what I realised the other day while I was editing the last episode? What? Um, is that I have called you beautiful in every single episode. Really? At the, at the start, I was like, I'm going to do a new one every week. That's right, I remember that. I'm going to change it up. <laughs> and then I just like realized that I have no vocabulary. <laughs> For the last so, 10 weeks, it's been the exact thing. Yeah, so, you know, mm, that's my fine. beautiful co-host. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I had something else to say at the start. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, I can't remember. Okay. That's fine. Um, go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Uh Check us out over there. <laughs> I, I'm really frustrated now because I had something that I really wanted to say. Well. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember. Oh, this is episode 25. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Welcome to episode 25 of the Fro Show. How did you even forget that? You said it like 10 seconds before you press play. Dude, I have three brain cells. One of them is focused on talking. The other one's focused on that. And the other one's focused on that. Okay. I don't have much going on in here. Which one did you forget about to remember that then? Um, the talking one. The, to- <laughs> the talking one was, you know, <laughs> off somewhere else. Right. Okay. Oh, my drink is really far away. Hold on. Okay. Bye. But anyway, so this week I experienced something that I haven't really experienced before. Paid work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was really low <laughs> It's sad because it's true <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go, go on it was just I'm such still a- mad about this big project that I decided to volunteer for Anyway <laughs> um, No, uh, and it's uh, video editing Yeah, I had an experience with video editing this week Go on For a, a project for uni uh, and I hated every minute of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know if it was th- just the editing or if it was the program I was using. I was using Final Cut Pro. Okay, I mean, which I mean is an industry standard under the other than Premiere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But what what were you, what, what were your issues? It, it, well, it was mainly like a. The project was to just go with the audio. What, what am I trying to say? Your job is to talk. I know, and I can't <laughs> do it today. It, w- <laughs> it was to complement the audio. Anyway, it was right. feature the audio. There we go. Right. That's what I was trying to say. Um, so, yeah, the job of the video is to feature the audio, and it was just kind of shapes that were popping up on the screen. And uh, Oh, like, a, like an abstract little thing, yeah. Kind of, except it was very, very simple. Right, I had like to make it very simple for me <laughs> to be able to complete Triangle. it. Triangle. <laughs> Circle. <laughs> but, but yeah. And uh, so it just had one or two things moving around. And right. I still hated every minute of it. So you had to... So this is like your first time, other than the thing that we did. Yeah. Really video editing. And yeah. you immediately went into keyframing and animation. <laughs> no, because it was kind of... It was more... The shapes... No. Okay. So the shapes didn't really move. It was like a circle would go up around the shape and then like a circle would pop up around a shape and then it would change to a different shape and it would sort of... Okay, if I explain the project, <laughs> it'd make a lot more sense. I have no idea the what you're trying to say. <laughs> the project was... it's um, It shows the p- different perspectives of brass players in a brass ensemble while they're playing. Sure. So, But I don't get what you're saying by a shape so the, on a like, shape. So changing there's, shapes. There's <laughs> That's what I got from what you just explained. Like there's the cir- a circle represents a different player in the group yep. and then and that that's a filled in circle and then like a circle around that like a red circle yep. that's not filled in will pop up over that saying this is now showing this perspective. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, so yep. I had to edit when when circles would pop up around different instruments. Right. Yeah. I get so what it, you're well, it's now. Well, not very difficult because it no. only had like two screens. One yeah. was the group, and the other was like a title. But right, it still took me four hours, and I hated it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> fair. Everyone's first video editing is going to take a while. My my first video editing experience was editing 
Minecraft videos <laughs> back when I was like probably 11. <laughs> so for YouTube? Yeah, I, so I, I have had many channels over oh, there. I think and I'm, you've mentioned that. I'm not going to name them <laughs> because I do not want people finding, finding them. them. But there are a couple where there are videos with thousands of views. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. I, I had a somewhat successful series wow. that was going. No one subscribed because like... Yeah. And I, I never like was like, subscribe to the channel. Yeah. I was just posting videos. But... um. Yeah, I, like there was a couple of videos that had like one to ten k. <laughs> oh, wow! Which is that's like not impressive. amazing, but it's like pretty I, okay. I think that's pretty impressive for an eleven year old. For Minecraft an eleven year old, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, true. Actually, that's yeah, yeah fair. <laughs> I did kind of hit it right at the peak, though. Oh, I was okay. like right, right on it. Um, yeah, I've done. I have done. A, I've made a lot of videos. Yeah. <laughs> in my time. Yeah, I can tell because you watching you edit. It's like. Yeah. Super quick now. Well, I've only really been using Premiere for probably two years. What were you using? I was what, using... What did you use as an 11-year-old to edit? As an 11-year-old, I used a allegedly pirated <laughs> copy of Sony <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which, um, Sony Vegas, I do not recommend. No? It was great. It was great in 2000... Early 2010s. Yeah. Um... And then it kind of just stayed in early 2010s and never flourished into this beautiful thing. Premiere is not great either. Premiere has a lot of issues. Yeah. But every every, every. professional software has issues. Oh, yeah. Um, it's really frustrating how industry standard programs always have problems. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit dumb. It makes me angry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I reckon I have edited... Well into the thousands yeah. of videos. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um like I and the I think the first the first real life video I ever shot mm. was a <laughs> this is really gonna show my age here. <laughs> was a Harlem Shake video. <laughs> oh my word. That I edited oh together. Oh my goodness. That was probably the first real life video. Other than I had a couple of videos where I did face cams and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, which I just shot with a webcam <laughs> and it was just like, nah. <laughs> and like the, the mic audio was from my headset. So it was like oh, the headset mic like, audio. So it was like, like screaming into it. all Yeah. The time. So it was like, <laughs> like that sort of vibe, <laughs> Oh my which goodness. was just super fun. Yeah. Um, my Google just thought I was talking to it. Oh <laughs> yeah. No Google. No Google. Um, but yeah, so that was like my first First experience. Editing experience. My first, the first video, I remember the first video I ever edited, mm. which is rare because I have a terrible memory. Yeah. Which goes to show that I really care about <laughs> this. The first video I ever edited was a video that I screen recorded on my Mac because I used to be a, an Apple person. Really? Uh, yeah. I didn't for, know you For a very Mac. long time until I was probably like 14 or 15. Yeah. Um, and I screen recorded it on my Mac um, and it was a, a, a tour of my sky base in oh. Minecraft <laughs> and it was like six <laughs> minutes long and it was just me walking through like, and this is my lava waterfall. Oh, I love and going back to old videos and you hear your old voice. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll. <laughs> Patreon show. I'll bring, oh, you gonna I'll do it? I will bring some up and I will show them oh, awesome. on the Patreon show. So awesome. if you want to see my uh, previous career, <laughs> um, check it out over there. Oh, <laughs> patreoncom slash the Fro Show. But yeah, I think I made like four dollars in AdSense or something like that from like my couple thousand views. Nice. That yeah. was vibing. Yeah. I never got it out because I had no way of getting to it, <laughs> and it's like expired now. Uh, but dumb. yeah. What was your first like? Sound thing, do you think? Um, Would have been music, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I, I didn't. I actually got into it quite late. Like a lot of people who I know who are my age in the industry now are like, yeah, I was like ten, mm. like you, and had. To was, be fair, I was pulling be, out my dad's old gear and all. To be fair, stuff. I did not want to do that as a career until like. That's true. Maybe yeah. two years ago. Yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, oh, I've been <laughs> doing this my whole life. Yeah. Uh, why am I? Not doing this. Yeah, why am I thinking of doing this other thing? Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it would have been good old Mixcraft oh. in music at school. Oh, Mixcraft. And the thing was, I was using it and I was getting good at it. And I was like, this is like professional. This is the best program ever. Mixcraft like, is like um, the toy phones that you give to kids. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, hello. <laughs> That's Mixcraft. It's it's that version of GarageBand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that would have been my experience. It was would have been making music, pulling up pre-recorded samples and and putting them together and being like this is the best thing ever this is this is it i'm gonna make it in this world <laughs> <laughs> i'm a professional <laughs> yeah so fair. Yeah. i and remember then i went to uni and they're like yeah. pro tools and it's like oh oh there's a whole oh. new world <laughs> <laughs> yep literally um should we do the news sure all right Welcome to Fro News. I am your anchor, Frank Mankin, and I'm joined by my co-anchor, Joe Murray. Hello. <laughs> uh, Joe has news this week, so we're going to go uh, two for one, well, it's baby. It's like you're surprised about that now, just because I didn't have news for the first few weeks. I am a bit surprised that you actually have news. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm making sure I have news every week. Now. Oh, good. I'm glad. All right. Um, num- uh, blah, 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 blah. To start off with, Nine Network has pulled Ellen DeGeneres' talk show from Australian TV. Really? Um, so it is no longer being shown in Australia, which is very interesting after oh. all of the, you know, stuff that's been happening. We talked yeah. about it. we talked about that in last week's episode if you want to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, next up, The Thing, the reboot, is in early development with Bloomhouse. Uh, John Carpenter, Bloomhouse Productions, and filmmaker John... Well, okay, hold on. Sorry, I wrote this totally wrong. <laughs> Bloomhouse Productions and filmmaker John Carpenter are developing a reboot of Carpenter's 1982 horror classic, The Thing, Variety has confirmed. The project is still in early stages and no other details are out just yet. But that should be very exciting. The yeah. Thing's a very good film. Yeah. Um, BTS released their first song in only English titled Dynamite this week and broke the YouTube record for most views in the first 24 hours with 101 million views. Yeah. I actually meant to listen to that song before I came, before I came here. <laughs> I was looking at it last night and I was like, I need to listen to this, but I forgot. But yeah. Wow. I think they're a Korean group. And yeah, yeah, they're a K-pop f- band. Yeah. First um, English, wow. fully English song. Yeah, That's cool. Mm. Um, you're not going to like this one. I didn't like this one. Um, Powerpuff Girls has a live action series in development at CW. <laughs> In the updated version of the series, the titular superheroes are now disillusioned 20-somethings who what? resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. Well, will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? I am not excited for I, that show. <sighs> um, and I why? kind of resent CW for even thinking Think, about yeah, it. Why? <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Uh, so strange. <laughs> Next up, uh, Kathleen Kennedy confirms that the Obi Wan series um, that is coming to Disney Plus is to be a limited run, so it'll only have one season. Um, Kathleen Kennedy said to the Wrap, "It's been very exciting to see the talent that's come in. We're now developing the limited Obi Wan Kenobi series with Deborah Chow, and she's been doing a phenomenal job." Hmm. Um, There's lots of news regarding the charts this week with Taylor Swift's Taylor Swift's album topping the charts for the fourth week in a row which is the first album to do so this year that hasn't been a hip-hop genre album. Oh. Yeah. Um, Drake topped the song charts with a number one debut of his single Laugh Now, Cry Later, um, and that fronts an expected album release coming soon. Um, We also had a country song hit the charts this week uh, with Morgan Wallen's Seven Summers debuting at number three. Wow. Which is quite rare to see now. Yeah, um, wow. With hip-hop so big, but yeah. Um, Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck have been confirmed to appear as Batman in The Flash. They will both be returning as Batman um, in The Flash. I think it's called Break... Not Breakpoint. Flash Flashpoint. Yeah. Something like that. Isn't it Break... Breakpoint is another movie. Yeah, anyway, okay, the right. coming Flash <laughs> movie, um, which is set to like show the Flash time traveling and stuff. So it'll probably go back to Michael Keaton, Batman, that sort of thing. So it should be very cool. And it'll be like alternate universes and stuff, which will be really, really cool. Mm. Um, next up, a reboot of The Exorcist is in the works for 2021. Uh, Deadline has reported that Warner Brothers Pictures and Morgan Creek Entertainment have a reboot in the works for the iconic horror film, um, mm. which should be great. I don't know if it'll be as good as the first film. It is still, <laughs> It is still one of the most profitable films that um, Warner Brothers has ever released. Really? The original film had a budget of 
two million dollars mm. and it made like four hundred and forty one million dollars. Whoa. Something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> insane. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. Um, the international pricings for Disney's Mulan have been revealed this week. Um, with its release on September four, it will be thirty dollars in the US, twenty pounds in the UK, which is about six twenty six US dollars. Um, and it'll be thirty five dollars in Australia. Because of the conversion rate. I'm not watching that movie. No. It's kind of... It's pretty sad. I but didn't want to watch that movie before and now I really don't want to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch it because I like that movie. I like, the, not, I like the music in it. It doesn't... We'll talk about this after the news, yep. but I'm about to burst your bubble. Okay. Um, and But, well, maybe you should uh, move to France because in France, the movie won't be released on September 4, but um, instead it will be released at a later date, but free of charge. Yeah, it's March next year. Is it? Yeah. Okay, that's ridiculous. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's the news. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. um, March next year. March next year. So, um, Mulan. Yeah. uh, It's not a musical. The new one? No. It has. They took out all the music. There's no dragon. What? It's. It's literally. It's like. It's. It's actually a. Yeah. It's like a movie. Movie. So there's. That's why I'm so against this film. Like there is no reason for me to want to watch it, at all. No. Um. But if there's no Mushu. There's no. If there's no Mushu, <laughs> there's no Muvu. No Mu. <laughs> no Mulan without Mushu. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's sad. <coughs> yeah. So that. Oh, my socks are coming down. Black. Uh, yeah, watermelon socks. I got watermelon socks. They're made of bamboo, actually. I think... Were you wearing them the other week and you mentioned that? I think so. <laughs> I, I enjoy the fact that they're made of bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about something this week because I stumbled upon a video um, by this this guy that I watch pretty regularly, Jesse Driftwood. Mm. He's fantastic. Check him out on YouTube. Um, and he was kind of... He had, he had a two-part series um, where he talked with a bunch of other creators about um, gear that they regret buying and gear yep. that they don't regret buying. Right. Gear that's been worth their purchase. Yep. Um, and we've kind of, we've touched on this before on the show of like little things that we've talked about where it's like, oh, this is things I don't like, this is things I do like, but mm. we've never really gone fully in depth into our purchases and like, you know, what's worked out for us. So yep. I thought it would be fun to kind of just talk about Purchases that, you know, we regret making. Mm. So do you have any purchases that you regret making? Oh. Because I definitely... Do you want me to start while you have a think? Well, I I haven't actually bought much Mm. for myself because, well, with uni, I have access to so much stuff there. Um, I haven't needed to, but yeah, let me have a think. All right. Um, So I have... It's it's a regret, but it's only a partial regret because um, I think it'll be worth it in the long run. Yeah. But currently, I have no use for it. Right. So my current regret mm. is my gimbal, which I which I love. I really yeah. love it. But um, I <laughs> should have done a bit more research. Because yeah. it doesn't hold most of my lenses. <laughs> oh. So I have to buy counterweights and stuff to make it actually work. Oh. So it's fine. Um, but I only have one lens that works on it. <laughs> so which lens is that? It's a bit awkward. The 50 mil, which is like tiny. Oh, the tiny one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so none of my L-series glass fits or any of my Sigma glass fits. It's all It all just <laughs> flops. Oh, that's really um, sad. So currently that's just a $650 paperweight. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. Um, other than that, though, lots of little purchases I regret. Um, mm. Just little things where it's like, there's all the, I'm sure there's videos like this for sound as well, but it's mm. like five things that'll improve your filmmaking yeah, yeah. straight away. And it's like, buy a top handle. And so I bought a top handle and I've never used it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Buy a on camera flash. And I've used it once. Like yeah, at a party. All, yeah, yeah. All these things are like, they're like this will. This is the one thing that is going to improve your 
filmmaking Mm -hmm. and it never does. (laughs) It's it's almost like the only thing that will improve your filmmaking and your ability is practice. Yeah. (laughs) Who'd have thought, right? (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) You're saying I actually have to get out there and do things? (laughs) Can't just buy good quality. Man. Yeah. No. Yeah, I haven't made any big purchases that I regret. Um, Definitely ones that have just made my life so much easier. Mm. Um, like the MIDI keyboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So easy. Then I can now just like, I get a, I'm sitting there at my desk, get a creative thought. I just, oh, quick, plug it in, play something and then dump. Otherwise, before I had to plug it in, pull up the, uh, the keyboard on the, on the keys, keyboard on the keys. Yeah. Board. Like the, the keyboard, typing keyboard. keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then you only get, like, a small row of keys and you got to, yeah, no. Nah. And now I have this 49 key, really nice. And you can just be like... Yeah, and then, I like, I pumped out a song last night in, like, an hour mm. just because I have... Because I would go through different sounds, find one, and it's like, oh, this is cool, and I'm sort of looking with one hand playing with the other. Mm. And then you work something out and it's like, record. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's mm. one I definitely... I love. Mm. That's a purchase I really, really like. Right. My number one purchase, mm. I have I have a couple. Mm. Uh, my number one purchase that I do not regret at all yeah. is my 24 to 70, my lens. Yep. The, on Bro, the EOS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have absolutely no regrets about buying that. It was three grand yeah. that I got it for because I bought it with pro filters as well because there's two, there's a... Um, a circular polarizing filter and a UV filter on it. Mm. Um, the UV filter is really just to protect the lens element. Yeah. And the CPL filter is just so that I can, you know, cancel out reflections and stuff. I'll talk yeah. about that a little bit at some point, but it's yeah. not that in depth. Um, but I, I have no regrets about buying that whatsoever. I yeah. use it so much. It's so nice. Yeah, it is. Such it nice is like lens. my number one lens i i very rarely use other lenses right and i've just bought this so I, my 18 to 35 from sigma just came it's what's on the wide right now um i'll cut to it if we're using it but we might not be <laughs> who knows <laughs> sometimes we don't use sometimes it. we don't um but i'm hoping that with that good quality glass it'll improve the quality of the add mm. um hopefully um because the add is not super up to par no these days well it's especially when you compare it to oh it's yeah it's literally it's just because the eos r is such a good camera it got mm. s- the eos r got so much hate when mm. it came out really but it is a phenomenal camera <laughs> i am so in love with it yeah <laughs> um and i think that's because canon has been updating the firmware pretty religiously all oh, right um and I assume it was just not a very good camera at the start, but I bought it pretty late in the game. So mm. I've had no issues with it. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so th- my lens is my number one purchase that I don't regret at all. Yep. Number two mm-hmm. is the tripod that that camera is currently on. I was I was waiting for that, actually. Yeah. Because why would you say that from? Because, so it's a Manfrotto B-Free tripod uh, with a bunch of numbers at the end. There's a whole bunch of them. Just look up B-Free. Um, and the fluid head one is the one that I have. Mm. Oh, yeah. So light. Yeah. Like I have no trouble chucking that on my bag and just carrying around all day. Mm. Um, it is when you sit, so when you stand it up to full height, it is perfectly level. There is yeah. no effort that you have to put into it whatsoever. The fluid heads are mwah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Um, and just the whole thing is just so good. It's mm. just so, and it gets so high up and it's so stable and sturdy. Yeah. Um, and I have two other tripods. Th- well, actually I have three other tripods if we're including this. That little guy. little Joby. Yeah. It's a little Joby. I'm not going to grab it. I, I grab it. Everything will fall out. But the little Joby, like Bendy boy. Yeah. Um, but none of them come close. No. At all. At all. I bought this. The one that the ADD is currently on, mm. if we're using that shot, is... Um, is a cheap like 90, 90 something dollar one that I got from um from a store. Yeah. Um and it is not a good tripod. It's fine. It works. 
Um, and it's technically a fluid head tripod, but <laughs> no. no, it's not a fluid head <laughs> tripod. It has fluid in the head, but that is that's about <laughs> as that's about as far as that goes. <laughs> um, so yeah, good lens, good tripod. Number three, third, and finally is good lighting. Good lighting. Uh, yes. This I that bought light. a Godox SL sixty W. And it is the cheapest of all of them. And it is such a... It is just... (laughs) It's just brought up the quality of all the videos I make so much. Yeah. And um, I don't think I would get another Godox one. Mm. I think I would ultimately get an Aperture one and just like go proper and get like a 120D or something. Mm -hmm. But they're like... A thousand dollars. So right. <laughs> it's a lot of money. But Frank, do you know what else is a thousand dollars? What? The microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is if we do a two thousand dollar job, mm-hmm. um, we can put Buy it towards up. putting a frame up. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Um but yeah, I think those are my three, like invest in a beautiful lens, invest yep. in a good tripod if you need a tripod. Lots of people don't need tripods. Like yeah. really think about the content that you're making because if a lot of it is handheld and if a lot of it is just, yeah, is handheld, yeah. you probably won't need a tripod. Like, You'll probably need a good camera rig. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good tripod, good lens and a good light and you will get much further than if you're investing in camera bodies and, you know, Random other stuff, mm. but yeah. So those are the those are the ones that I don't regret at all, yeah. um, and to the point where I am going to buy another lens in the next month or so. Another what? L, another L series lens. No. Yes. I. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. Put it to. No. Yes. Oh. I'm going to do it. I think you should buy a microphone instead. Nah. <laughs> but. This is a very good quality microphone. This is a very good quality lens. Yeah, but... And it's 16, to, it's 16 to 35. But you already have one. got image stabilization in it. And <laughs> it's very pretty. <laughs> and it's uh, it's not that bad in terms of money. And okay. I'm buying it for my own money. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm buying it myself. Whatever. It's a person. This is a personal purchase. <laughs> <laughs> that will be used for work. But this is yes. a personal purchase. Um... But yeah, no, I'm selling, actually, if you want to grab it, there's the, it's the, no, down, yep, to the right, yep, that one. I'm currently trying to sell this lens, which is a DC Sigma 10 to 20, um, which only works on crop bodies because it's little. Um, I'm currently trying to sell this one on Facebook Marketplace um, and hoping I can get like 350 for it. Mm. And then I can put that towards the lens and then I can get the new lens for like, 600 once I sell yeah, this true. one, which is totally doable. Mm. I'll chuck it over here. I won't make you take it again. Um, but yeah, I literally lenses. I have no trouble yeah. justifying those purchases. Yeah. Like actually this brings me into a good point. I was going to talk about this later, but I got that 18 to 35 yesterday. It came in yesterday mm. and it was such like a, <laughs> I wasn't excited about it. Oh really? <laughs> like it was just, like it was just it came and I was like, "Cool, oh. it's here, I guess." And that's like an eight hundred and fifty dollar purchase. <laughs> just like, like oh. and the roadcaster was like seven fifty, yep. and I was so excited that about was, this. That's amazing. And then the the lens came and I was like, "I guess it's cool." I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of sad. But I mean, it's it's the thing is I didn't really buy like I have a much better quality lens, mm. but that was just like a. It was just a, a, a necessary purchase for once the black for magic the, comes in. Yeah. Do yeah. you have a a September eleventh is when they're getting restocked. So so two weeks after that. Yeah. So hopefully, mid to late September, I'll have my camera. That'd be good. Yeah. 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 But do you have any other any other stuff? Well, the way you when you were talking about getting like a good quality lens, and. It sort of just reminded me of, of getting a good quality microphone and just having that first, the first pickup of audio or yeah. visuals 
being good quality because yeah. as long as that's good, then you know it can what, only what it, get better in post. Yeah, yeah, like you can't you can't polish a turd in post no. if it looks like a turd. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do some things, but it's that's why noise is such an important thing in film mm. to like not have. Yeah, because if you have noise, it is going to be the worst process for you to remove it. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and that's that's why I'm investing. My next investment will be a good quality microphone. Is it going to be a Sennheiser? Probably, yeah. You can probably find one used. I'm sure. Probably. You can probably find one for eight hundred rather than a thousand. Yeah. I yeah. New. It's like eleven hundred dollars. Mm. In Australia, it's ridiculous. Mm. I reckon that'll be a good investment though, mm. if you get one of them. Yeah. Because we can use that for. Well, you can use that for I anything. Can, yeah. That's like such a versatile mic. Mm. Um, and you know. And it sounds amazing. Peter McKinnon and Marcus Brownlee both use it, so <laughs> so it must be good. So it must be good. <laughs> no, it is. Actually, we haven't even mentioned what mic it is. It's a oh, it's true, a yeah, it's a MKH four one six. Yeah, I would not have remembered that, but yes, it's like I've just, it's because I used it like twice and fell in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me when I talk about lenses. You're just like. Numbers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get the 16 to 35 f4 is uh, USM lens. I understand 16 to 35. <laughs> That's got to do with the zoom. <laughs> That's the zoom. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Segue. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So, <laughs> sorry. I was just like, I was trying to decide whether I should talk about another item that I've bought that I'm really happy with, but I decided not to. It's my drone. I'm happy with my drone. Anyway, I'm just gonna slide that Can in. Can I have there. it? It's okay. No. Oh. A great purchase. If I get if I get another drone, I will give you that one. You should get another drone. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I mentioned last week that I was going to go see Tenant. Yes, you did. And I did. I Ooh. went and saw Tenant. And and I would like to give my formal review. Oh. Of Tenant. Yeah. My no. It's a non-spoiler review. Okay. Um. Number one. Uh, my brain hurt afterwards. Really? Yeah, like I walked out of the theater, and I was just like, so deep in thought, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to unwrap the story that was just presented to me. Right. But it was fantastic. The first, so the first hour of the movie goes very quickly. Yeah. Like it goes, it's literally like each scene is maybe three minutes long. Wow. It's okay. like. He's here, and then he's here, and then he's here, and then he's here, and he's here, 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 and he's just like, bop, 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 Yeah. And it's just setting up this whole world of characters so quickly. Yeah. And it's very, very well done. Mm. Um, And then you kind of get into the nitty gritty of the story, and you kind of slowly start figuring out, well, you, st- you think you start figuring out what's going on. Yeah. And then the whole story just gets flipped on its head, literally. Yeah. Um, And... You're just like everything from the first hour of the movie slowly starts clicking into place. Mm. And then you get to the end of the movie and it's just this one big circle. All right. And like the story has just started in the middle of this circle. Oh. And you've just gone around and you're back at the start. Oh, that is so cool. And like (laughs) this is, this is not a spoiler because this doesn't, this doesn't give away anything about the film, Mm. but you start in the middle mm. and the move the, the the contents of the movie are the middle to the end of the story right and then at the end of the story you realize that everything that's happened before the movie mm. isn't actually before the movie it's, it's at the it's after the end Oh my goodness. It's so, it is so well done. Yeah. So well done. I need to see this now. Yeah. It mm. is, it's literally like, it's just, it's wild. So, yeah. um, the whole premise of the movie, right, is like that some stuff moves in reverse. That's mm. ba- that's the easiest way for it to be explained. Some stuff reverses the way that time works. Right. That's it. <laughs> like that is the, that is the dot point understanding of the film. The film, right. Um, and it works for everything. It works for things, it works for people, it works for whatever. Mm. And basically the first three quarters of the movie are moving forward. Yep. And then 
there's like 20 minutes where it moves backwards and you go back through the entire film. What? And then you get there and then it splits off into two sections where there's one group going backwards and one group going forwards and you see both of their perspectives at the same time and then it meets in the middle and then that's like the ending of the story. What and the it heck? is like if I had to draw out this timeline mm. <laughs> no, I don't know what I would draw, man. <laughs> I think it would be like a line and then a line through the line and then another line <laughs> and then an arrow from that line around to the, to the start. But then like there's more lines that like branch off at the end and it's just, it's wild. It's yeah, really, really, right. it's really, really cool. And like r- uh, the acting is so good and yeah. you would love absolutely love the sound design yeah okay because the way they do all of the reverse sound effects mm. oh <laughs> man so cool right. like see like and it's so clear because it, it's because it's not just it's not just in reverse like it's not that simple it's like mm. once you make the decision to do something that thing happens in reverse. So I was explaining this to you before yeah, the show. Yeah. There's a scene where he's trying to pick up a bullet and it gets explained to him like, the second that you make the decision that you're going to drop this bullet, mm. it'll come back into your hand. That's so cool. And so everything that happens when they're reversing isn't actually in reverse. Mm. It's just happening in reverse order. So the sound design isn't as simple as just recording the sound effect and flicking it in reverse. Right. It's like exactly how it would sound normally. Yeah. But the progression of the sound effects are in reverse. So <laughs> it's like you hear an explosion in real time. Like you hear, no, it would be like debris. Mm. And then you would hear the debris lifting off the floor. And then you would hear the sound of the explosion. And then you would hear the sound of the explosion going back in. Oh. And then you would hear the rocket going back. Oh, that is so cool. It's so well done. So I would recommend, I'm not going to talk about it anymore because it gets very easy to get into spoiler territory with mm. this film because yeah. there's there's so much, to, even at the start of the film, mm. there's stuff that ties back into the end Yeah. where if, you, if I tell you the start thing with my knowledge of the end of the film, I could spoil the start. Right. It's one of those movies. Yeah, okay. So um, just go watch it. Yeah. Robert Pattinson is phenomenal in this movie. Mm -hmm. Michael Caine is in it for five minutes. All right. Does fantastically. Um, I don't know the name of the guy who plays the main character, which I feel really bad about, but he is phenomenal. Yeah. So, so good. There are so many moments of realization that he has during the movie Mm. where you're just watching like... Wow. Yeah. (laughs) So good. So, so good. So I would recommend, would legitimately give it like... A nine out of ten. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Very close to a solid ten. Yeah. But it's I reserve tens very rarely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna make a very controversial statement here. Oh. Um, and I'm going to say that Tenet is a better film than Inception. Really? Yeah. I'm making a very, very bold statement here. I have to go watch it now. Um I can argue that some other time. I think that it is a significantly better film. Significantly better. Yeah. Okay. Well, in okay, in terms of Christopher Nolan, yes. In terms of other films, no. Okay. Like it, Christopher Nolan's filmography is just top notch, full yeah. stop. So you can't really yeah. like <laughs> I can't say that like Inception is terrible and I hate it. No, Inception is still very much like an eight point five film. Mm. Tenet is just a nine. Just a nine. Okay. Um Interesting. It's very good. And it's just, I think it's honestly just because Christopher Nolan has been making films longer and he has more experience now. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's mm. really it. Mm. Um, yeah, very good. Go watch it if you can. If mm. you're in a place where theatres are open and you feel comfortable doing so, mm-hmm. but don't subject yourself to, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> everything. That, <laughs> if, uh, that if, pandemic if, yeah, that, that be happening. That darn pandemic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I very much enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, now, I have a story to tell about it. Mm. Uh, Robert Pattinson did an interview the other day. Robert Pattinson is playing Batman in the upcoming Batman film. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and he was on set shooting Tenet 
while Batman auditions were happening. Right. And so he went up to Christopher Nolan and said, hey, I'll need to leave set early today. Uh, I have a family thing. Because <laughs> obviously Christopher Nolan directed all the Dark Knight films. Right. And it would be a bit rude to go up yeah. to him and be like, hey, man. <laughs> I'm auditioning for the Batman movie. <laughs> and so he went up to Christopher Nolan and was like, hey, I've got to go. Like, I have a family thing. I'm really sorry. And Christopher Nolan was like, you're auditioning for the Batman, aren't you? <laughs> and and like, he was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that is great. But he's got it. He's got the role. Yep. The trailer for Batman came out this week. Oh, yeah. It looks fantastic. Yeah. So good. I've got to watch that. I'll show you after the show. Okay. But man... I am so excited for that movie. You have no idea. <laughs> it just, it looks so fun. Yeah. And it looks, I'm I'm hoping that it gets at least an MA rating, if not R. Okay. Because the, really? the trailer looked very intense. Right. And I hope, I hope, hope, hope that they lean into that really hard. Yeah. And that they make this super, super dark and gritty. Right. But like not in like a... Uh, Powerpuff Girls way and like a, um, you know, like the good kind of gritty where it's like they're still human, but it's just a dark and honest story. Yeah, yeah. Um, very much like Watchmen back in the day. Oh, uh, yep. Um, so I really hope it's something along those lines of like very dark and very, you know, is able to show gore because mm. that's really all that I want from this movie. <laughs> And to good see acting. Blood and good I just want to see people get punched in the face by Robert Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> Go see like Saving Private Ryan or something instead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have never watched that movie. You in haven't its entirety? No. It's past the first scene. It's in there. Yeah, to that's be kind of what I've heard. I've mm. watched. I've watched the first half of the film. I've watched up I mean, until the end is pretty good. I've watched up until the scene where they're at the building and they're having like a pep talk with Matt Damon, I think. Oh, that's like n near the end. Yeah, that's where I watched up to and I was like, I don't care anymore. No, <laughs> I don't I don't know if I liked Matt Damon as that. Mm. But yeah, I, I got to that point and I, like I knew I was near the end and I was like, I just, yeah. I have no interest anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first scene was epic. Oh, yeah. But then, yeah. That was like, anyway. I watched um, 365 Days, that like oh, yeah. porn movie on Netflix. Yeah. And the first like half hour is fun. Like it's funny. It's mm. just like, you're just like, because it, it is no no joke, a terrible film. Right. It's very bad. Um, and I was watching it and just laughing at it. You can laugh at it for a while. You can just be like, ha ha, this sucks. <laughs> and then it gets to a point where it's just not funny anymore. Oh. Like you hit 45 minutes and you're just like, <sighs> and like you've committed at that point, like you're committed to finishing this film. Right. And then you hit like an hour and a half and it just is not, it's just torture at that point. Right. Like it's poorly written and poorly shot mm. and very rapey. Yeah. Very yeah, rapey. Yeah, that. Um, like the, like. It's, yeah, you can look past it for the first 30 minutes to be like, haha, this is really badly written. No one would ever do this. And then like by out, by the first hour, it's like, oh, he is just sexually assaulting this woman. Yeah. Like this is not sexy. This is just assault. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and it's also the acting is terrible and the, just everything is so bad. Everything is so bad. It's just. <laughs> it's just bad. It's just softcore porn. Yeah. Like if you, yeah, just. Just mm -hmm. watch real porn, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, there, there's, there, like, legitimately, there is only re one reason for people to be watching that film, and it is to watch softcore porn. Right. And don't, don't, don't no. subject yourself to it. No. It's not, it is not worth it. <laughs> there's, oh, I'm trying to think of this movie that we got shown. Uh, I don't remember. But it was about, like, Oh, it was so weird. It was an older film and it was about them finding like this this hardcore show that that was that was like getting bigger than the softcore porn that they were broadcasting. Yeah, it was so strange. I don't know what this is. I'm I got shown at uni and it was the weirdest. Very thing. intrigued. I will find it. All right. And you should watch it. 
being okay. a filmmaker. Okay. Very strange movie. Okay. Um, anyway, sorry. That no, that's movie. fine. Um, so I have a problem now watching movies. So Tenet is the, other than The Dark Knight, mm-hmm. Tenet is the first modern film that I've seen in theatres since like February. Yeah. And since February, I have become a lot more knowledgeable in film and cameras mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mostly because of this show, because I do a lot of research into that sort of stuff for yep. the show. Yep. And I was watching Tenet, and all I could think while watching that was, ah, oh, they're shooting this on an Ari Alexa. Ah, oh, this scene's shot on a Panasonic film camera. Ah, oh, that's how they did that. Oh, that shot's cool. Oh, I wonder how they did that. Oh, I bet they probably masked that section and then, like, <laughs> like just that the entire time. Dude. I fully understand. <laughs> fully understand. I've written down there on the on the uh, whiteboard, Glad. Yeah. I saw Gladiator for the first time, which is like a classic. I should have seen it already. Yeah. But, um, I haven't seen it. I'll yeah, totally admit it. that. Yeah. yeah. I've watched enough of it to know. Yeah. But I've just never felt the want to watch it. Yeah. And I was with, I was with a group of cousins. They're actually my cousins. Yeah. I was going to say friends, but no, they're my cousins. <laughs> and um, and none of them are like in the creative industries. One's like doctor, one does marketing and others a school teacher or chappy. Anyway. and um, Chappy being chaplain. For yes. people that don't know what yeah, that means. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, we were watching it and five minutes in, I was trying so hard not to say like, gee, this, this ADR is a bit average. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. Five minutes in, I was like, <laughs> mm. and yeah, the yeah, it got me. I don't know why. I don't know why. But maybe, maybe it was just the TV I was watching it on. That like maybe the sound was really average. Mm. But other other sound designers, let me know. What do you think about <laughs> the first, the first, the opening fight scene of of Gladiator? Because I thought the sound design was a bit. I'll average. have to get it, it up after the show because I really want to see yeah, what you're talking about. Now. It is an older film. Like I think 2000 mm. is when it was released, but I'm still kind of like, surely they could have done better than that. Yeah. Even then. Um, but yeah, so I fully understand that when you're watching films, it's kind of, that is just constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of ADR, actually mm. I was, so I'm in a Facebook group for filmmakers. Yep. And a lot of the time people post their work for feedback and criticism, that sort of thing. Mm. And this guy posted a real estate ad, which looked beautiful. Yeah. It was so well shot and so well composed and beautiful color grade. Mm. And they had an an awesome rig to shoot it. And it was like perfectly stable and level. And they were walking through this place. And Mm. there was this guy who was like walking through and showing them the place and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I was watching this without sound. I was like, wow, this is a really professional video. Yeah. I wonder what people have to say about this this video. Mm. So I went to the comments and all of them were like, dude, you need to fix this ADR. Dude, your ADR is so bad. Right. Dude, this ADR sucks. Like, the, oh, like there was like 30, 40 comments literally wow. just talking about his ADR. And I was like, surely <laughs> it can't. Be Be that that bad. bad. Yeah. And I clicked it. Man, it was (laughs) that bad. It was, it was like, welcome to the real estate house. (laughs) It was like a solid, probably 0.5 second delay. Wow. And his intonation was different. Like the, the, the Mm. way that he was saying it didn't match the ADR. Yeah. It was really bad. And then he was in the comments trying to defend it and just like, just digging. Yeah. He was just digging yep. his hole. Um, yeah. And it was, it was just really bad. And he was talking about like, oh, this is just like a scratch copy, blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, so when are you planning on recording the actual ADR? Mm. And he was like, oh, <laughs> well, we don't really have the talent anymore. And I was like, well, so you're not going to record like, this is it then. <laughs> That's like, it, yeah. You're going to have to use, like worst case scenario, you have to use the camera audio because this ADR is not acceptable. And camera audio would just be terrible. You would hear the, you'd actually, with the rig that he had, you would hear, yeah, footsteps. You would hear the focus rig as well. Oh, really? You Like you would hear everything. Like you would hear the camera like jostling in the, yeah, it would be bad. It would be really, really bad. 
Um, but yeah, so I thought that was really interesting with the ADR and everything. Mm. I've never seen ADR that out of sync. Really? No. I Surprisingly, I've seen uh, like ads on TV that have just been terrible. Like before I'd even started studying, I was like, I wonder Gee, why is that bad. is. I don't know. I don't know how like they get it from the production and they're kind of like, yes, let's air this. I actually had that watching the ads before the, before Tenet. Because they were yeah. showing ads for... So in, in Brisbane, right, we have a lot of car dealerships. Mm. Like way more it, than the normal place. It's, it's very strange. Um, and a lot of them put up ads mm. in the theatre. Um, and there was this one ad where it was for... I think it was for... Um, I don't remember. It was for, it, but it was for a dealership. And it was for like not a high-end dealership, mm. but like not a low-end. De- it was like... like um, What's wow? What's the one I'm thinking of? Um, Wait, you mean like not a big one or no, like no, 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 like, like Toyota not, or something? Like not Toyota, like in between like Toyota Mitsubishi? and like BMW. Oh right, like in that area, it was like one of those brands, like Volkswagen or something. Yeah, Volkswagen. That was it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was the ad for the new Volkswagen that has like the wireless charging pad in the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Um. And the footage is beautiful, mm. like so well shot and so well composed, mm. really, really cool. And then it comes up with these screens in between the cuts mm. that are showing the prices of yeah. the cars. Yeah. And they were very bad. Really? Like they were just, I don't even know. They were like really low resolution. Oh, on this massive cinema screen. Yeah. And it's like you would surely You'd you would <laughs> think about that. Yeah. Like if I was shooting an ad for a cinema, like 1080 is do that picture was not 1080. <laughs> that picture was 720 or 480. Like wow. like you would notice that on a monitor. Wow, there is okay. no way that that got that people just didn't see that. Yeah. That had to be a case of it'll be fine. Y- yeah, which I, I don't understand how that can happen in in a professional space. <laughs> hey, guess what, guys? It's not fine <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about yeah. it. <laughs> I be, noticed we wouldn't be talking about it if if it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same thing with like that ad. So that ad was a cut up between that the the driving in the mountains ad, and they obviously had the original footage for that. You know the ad where they have the car, the people in the car wash costumes. Yes. And they're like dancing around. Yep. So they t- very clearly didn't have the original footage of that anymore. Mm. Just downloaded it from YouTube and really? used that copy to cut back into this ad. Oh. So it's like compressed yeah. and has heaps of artifacting. And I was like, you're paying yeah. tens of thousands of dollars yeah. to have this ad aired in a cinema and in a big, this is not a small town cinema either. This is like the biggest theater chain in Australia. Yeah, yeah. And you are just fine with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose deadlines are probably a big part of that. Yeah, I under- so I understand the footage one. I get that. Yeah, I don't understand the picture the, one. Yeah, that's like, weird. That's I guess. Well, still with deadlines, sometimes you're just like, "That'll be fine. I gotta send this off." Yeah, but still. Yeah, you should. If you're doing something for that, shouldn't you be professional enough to be, to be able to manage time to, yeah, get it. Yeah, Ab- uh, you know, I absolutely agree. Yeah, <laughs> it should be. And if if you can't get the 1080 copy, just really quickly chuck one together. It was not a complex picture. It was like yellow background, car in the front, price, right. logo. That was it. Yeah. That like it literally was on. It wasn't, and that's. I think that's why they got away with it. It wasn't on screen for very long. It was like mm. boom, boom. Okay. But I was looking, and it happened a couple times. It was several different graphics that popped oh. up, and I was like, "Wow." And oh, and the other thing, my pet peeve about cinema ads mm. is them putting up the same ad from two thousand six. <laughs> like the there's oh there's the one ad whenever my dad and I go to the movies, the one ad where it's like the um. I think it's a Toyota dealership and it's family oh, yeah. owned. Oh. And it's like three or four generations. And it was like, it's like the voiceover is like the oldest one. And he's like, me and my boys, we <laughs> own the. Like, this, this wow. I'm 90% sure that guy's dead now. <laughs> I am almost certain because there is no way mm-hmm. that they could reshoot this ad right. because they would have. Yeah. It is well over 10 years old. Right. Okay. 
But that's yeah. kind of crazy. I have a bunch of opinions about cinema ads. I very I have a pet peeve about them. Yeah. <laughs> my biggest um my biggest complaint was when they changed the cuz the advertising company that does all the cinema ads mm. has an ad that plays before all of the ads. And it's the like Yes. Yeah, yeah you, yeah, do you know which one I'm know talking about? That, yeah. yeah. And a couple of, and I had that ad memorized because <laughs> I go to the movies all the time. Yeah. And I loved that ad. And yeah. then they changed it. Oh. And I hate the new ad. <laughs> new ad sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I want them to go back to the bring original. Bring back the old ad. Uh, what's that company called? It's like, it's the one where it's know, like, um, if you've got your something and you've got your That's special right. something, yeah. that one. Yeah. Little something is yeah. a big something. Yeah. That old, I do, I remember them changing you remember, that now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how annoying that was? The old ad was amazing. Yeah, what is that ad? What is that ad for? What like, like I really want to remember the company name now, but it's like if you oh, I don't know the name. A big some, a little something can then it's turn like, into a big something. It's like if you have something, yeah, let us get it out. I'm yeah. gonna look it up afterwards. But they changed the ad, and that was my pet peeve for ages because it was the exact same script, uh, but slightly different. Right, like they just they tweaked it. Yeah, and so every time I would be sitting there and I'd be like. Saying that, saying the ad at the same time, <laughs> and then the word would change, and be like, "What's no, the <laughs> That's not right. That's you got it wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my little <laughs> rant about. Yeah, I get that. Cinema ads. Mm. I just want them to be better than they are. Mm. I just am sad that they're not as good as they could be. Yeah, that's kind of weird that that Volkswagen one was like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I actually. I think I might know the guy who worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. That would be awkward. <laughs> we should ask him what his deadline was. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I actually want to ask him now. I just realized that. Wow. What does he do? Is he sound? Uh, or is he... He's studying sound, but I think he might do film as well. <laughs> I really want... I, w- I would hope that he did the shooting and not the editing. Because... I, if he did the shooting, I have no problem with him. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe he was just working on the sound of it. Does it sound okay? It sounds great. Okay, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like everything I'll else. Look. Everything, all the shots, like the actual footage in the ad is beautiful. Like yeah. Everything, okay. everything by the editing is great. Okay. But that's the thing is the edit will make or break it. Mm. Actually, I have one last thing that I want to talk about before mm-hmm. we finish up. Yep. Speaking of editing, um, I watched Project Power the other day. I don't know what that is. It was the movie that I talked about last week. In uh, oh, it was the Jamie Fox one. Yes, yep. um, the one that got okay reviews, mm. and I agree with the reviews. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's fun. It's like it's like a good turn your brain off movie. Okay. Um, but I it could have been so much more, and that mm. makes me kind of sad. Right. Um, because it could have been. So great. Yeah. Um, and it would have benefited from a much tighter edit. It's just, it's too long. It's like 20 minutes too long. Right. And like the first half hour of the movie goes way too slowly. Like, and most of the information in that first half hour could have been conveyed so much simpler. Mm. Like there's, there's like a solid 15 minute segment where, um, the main character goes and hunts down this dude. Yeah. And it's like, this is not relevant at all to the story. Mm. Like this could have just been, a new segment that the main character sees on TV and we would have gotten the exact same amount of information out of it. Right. So it's like that sort of thing, like just scripting decisions and editing decisions that would have made it a much better film. Yeah. Um, But I mean, on the whole, if you're, if you want something dumb to watch, (laughs) just watch that. It's just, it's just, it's fine. It's like watching, (laughs) (laughs) it's, it's not Marvel. Yeah. But it's, it's okay. (laughs) <laughs> like I don't know how else to describe it Like there is nothing Like there is nothing amazing that I can say The visual effects were good mm. And the sound was okay <laughs> it, was like, it wasn't great No it, like it was There were some shots that I really liked There were some shots that were very cool Yeah Like there was There was one shot where They went up and over someone And like tilted the camera And I was like That was pretty creative But for the most part I was like Yeah <laughs> I, give I a- love that reaction. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I mean that's what all the, like that's what, literally the review that I read was like, eh, it was alright. Like I would give it a solid six. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's like it's not mediocre enough to be a five. It's not good enough to be a seven. seven. <laughs> it's just, just fine. 
That is, I love that's an amazing review. <laughs> I love that. If there's nothing else to watch, watch Project Power. Because <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, folly fact time. Let's go. Just go. All right, Joe, what have you got for us this week? All right, I got... Uh, wait, what is this for? Oh, that's right. I didn't write down what it's for. I just wrote the fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've spoken about dragon roars before. Yeah. If you don't have a dragon handy, like like if you don't have an elephant handy, that one was good for that. I don't remember what it was. This one's good if the you don't... Flapping, ha- the flapping, uh, the oh, leather. That's it for yeah. the ears. Um, so this is if you don't have a dragon handy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I said one ages ago, which is like you use, you can record different roars of like lions or I don't remember what else. Lions, tigers and bears. Oh my. Yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make that joke. <laughs> I should have left it for you. Um <laughs> and then That's a good one. I'm really <laughs> proud of you. And then you can pitch it down or just EQ it weirdly to and slow it down and just make it really Yeah, like something that? like sure. Um <laughs> but another way to do it is you could drag a plastic <laughs> drag a plastic patio table across some cement. Oh. Yeah. So drag it Dragged it long and short across cement, played with some EQ and pitch, and got some very interesting rules. So, huh. EQ pitch, yeah, dragging a plastic yeah. table across cement. I had pff, never would have crossed my mind to yeah. do that. I never would have thought that that sound would just be dragging. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching <laughs> this week's episode. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, let's let's finish up there. That's nice. Uh, Thank you so much for listening to this or watching this episode of The Fro Show. Um, if you want to check us out on Patreon, that's patreon.com slash The Fro Show. Um, there's heaps of stuff over there. We do a show after the show every single week. Way more chill, way more fun. Um, this episode, we're going to be showing uh, my old YouTube videos. Um, so that'll be fun. I am so excited. <laughs> that'll be a good time. Yeah. Um, other than that, check us out on social media at The Fro Show on everything. Um, we post about the new episodes that are coming. You've got sneak peeks occasionally. Um, mm. And other than that, it just supports us. It means you can DM us and chat to us and Ooh. we'll reply. Um, Joe, do you have anything you want to add? No. See you next week. No. All right. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hope you all have a wonderful week and we hope that we see you in the After Fro Show. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.